concept that I use, you know, to explain this, uh, which is closely related to interactive universalism, is the concept of democratic iterations. And what I mean by this is this. Um, every democracy, a constitutional democracy, and also many non-democracies, for example, a constitutional monarchy like uh, Morocco, have by now adopted a certain system of rights. Uh, these rights are also enshrined in various international documents, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the European Convention on Human Rights, the European Charter, or the Inter-American Declaration of Rights, or the Arab Declaration of Human Rights. And, um, but in every case, uh, these rights require interpretation, or what I call iteration in a specific uh, context. And what interests me is how we contextualize the universal. Again, going back to this theme of interactive universalism, for me to speak with Hegel, the universal is never simply abstract. It is always the concrete universal. The universal always has the abstract and the concrete within it in a dynamic tension and in a dynamic relationship. This is what Hegel called the concrete universal. So I'm interested in processes of democratic iterations as also they relate to the rights of others, be they women, be they migrants, be they sexual minorities, ethnic minorities, religious minorities. Now, my thesis is that in the process of political conflict and agonism, which is essential to the democratic public sphere, what happens is sometimes social movements, agonistic movements, use these concepts of rights to apply to them. When uh, the American Declaration of Independence said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, certainly they did not at that point include women. They did not include uh, black slaves uh, that were uh, not even considered uh, human, but the property of the master. And at the same time, when uh, women and during the abolitionist movement, you know, black slaves say, I am also a human being and I claim these rights for myself, what happens is a process of iteration, democratic iteration in the sense that the voice of those who have been excluded get re included into the public sphere, or at least let's put it this way. There is a critique of the public sphere for being exclusionary, and there is a claim on the part of those who have been excluded to want to be included. So the first is questioning the boundaries of the public sphere via invoking these rights claims. The second point is that the subjectivity of the one who invokes a right for oneself immediately also changes the hermeneutic of this right. And what I mean by this is, again, I'll go back to an example from the women's movement. Uh, most political concepts of rights distinguish between the public and the private sphere and have a certain understanding of who the legal subject is. Now, when women become the subject of rights, both politically and legally, there are a set of issues that also come into the public sphere. Sexual harassment, rape, abortion, sexual violence in marriage, all of a sudden, all these issues that were considered part of private life and that were not considered fundamental to the subject of rights understood in terms of classical bourgeois democratic and socialist revolutions come into the public sphere. So what changes is not only who is speaking, but also what is being spoken about.